Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. My name is Paulo and I'm here again for another pen review. First of all, I want to ask you if you like my channel and the videos that I make, please don't forget to put a like in the video if you like this particular one and please don't forget to subscribe. That is a good way for me to grow online and to be able to show you more pen reviews. So, today I'm going to show you the review of a little German pen and I think it's always interesting to go to less well-known models or brands, although this brand is well-known, maybe the model not that much. And so, this pen is the Reform Skywalker and I think this is a, a nice name for, for a pen. Um, this pen was bought uh, some years ago here in Lisbon. I'm not 100% sure, but I think I bought it in 2004 and it was bought in a store as a, a regular item. It was not very expensive, I don't remember how much I paid and I cannot find any price on eBay to have an idea on how much such a pen would cost. I think around 35 euros maybe, comparing with other models, but because it is a demonstrator I don't know if it can be, get higher, I'm not sure. So, uh, this pen is a pen that I inked for the first time, although I have it since 2004, I guess, I only inked it for the first time in 2020, in October. So this pen is from Reform, and Reform is an old German brand from Heidelberg, and it was founded by people that came from Caveco in the 1930s to go into and create this, pen, this brand and this brand eventually closed in 2003. So it makes sense that the, the pen was still widely available in 2004, when I think I bought it. Uh, and so it closed, the company closed in, uh, by that time, the factory also, 2003, as far as I could find. So, let's take a look at the pen. First, the pen is transparent, it is a demonstrator model and it has quite a clear plastic, it is well made. Let's take a look, the pen has the typical cigar shape, it has a little dome there, then you have a small ring that is the support for the clip, the clip has this drop or tear shape, it is very very springy and then you have a cap band and there are no engravings outside in the clip anywhere. You can see the nib through a translucent inner cap on the inside the cap. Then you have a barrel. There are sometimes some little fibers that come from my burlap background but I guess you know that. I thought of getting rid of this but some people say it's my it's my thing. So, then you have a clear barrel that is cylindrical and you can see it is a cartridge pen. You see the threads of the barrel there and there is a brass insert there on the end of the pen. Then, then you have another little ring, very similar to the one on the cap. Let me uncap it. It, it uncaps by clicking in place. So this is quite the same thing on the other side. When the pen is uncapped, you have the clear section where you can see the fins of the feed, you can see the whole nib there, and you can see the ink around the fins of the feed. Then you have the nib which is made of steel and it says reform, it has the the logo of the brand on top of it, Reform, Germany and M for medium nib. It is a two-tone nib and here on the other side it's quite a regular um, 
feet. Then you can unscrew the, the barrel to see the, the, these, the inside and to access the cartridge and it can take a short international cartridge. The pen is made in such a way that I cannot insert any bigger cartridge. It will not fit because of the brass piece there. I cannot even put a converter because then I cannot screw the barrel again on the pen. So this is some, a limitation for some of you. For me it's not a problem because I like cartridge pens. However, sometimes it's nice to have room to put a, a spare cartridge there, but it's, no, it's not a major problem for me. However, it has this brass weight there, and why is that? I think it's there to give it an extra weight here, so it will rest in your hand quite well. Sometimes when I think about the comfort in writing, I think a lot of where the weight should be put. Sometimes I think the weight should be here on the section. And if that's true, because it makes it easier, it may also make the pen uh, to slip a little more from your fingers and you have to hold it tighter. I don't really think there is a formula uh, that just rests in where the weight should be. I think it depends on the weight, on the size of the pen and many things. The pen is very, very light because it's all plastic, very light plastic, but this is heavy. And this makes the pen to have a perfect balance. You can see I'm not holding it. It's just against me and then it's perfect. Then the cap, does it post or not? Yes, it posts and it posts very securely and now it becomes very comfortable because the cap is very light and the most of the weight is here. So it's still very comfortable and well balanced. It's posted or unposted, it's the same thing. So this is an interesting uh, item. I don't really know when it was made. I think it was made maybe in the 1990s. I don't have much information. It has gold trim. It's not a big pen, but it's not too small. It's on the thinner side, but that's it. So now let's take a look at the size comparison, which is always a, an interesting thing to do. And for the size comparison, I have here the usual stuff, which is a Parker Centennial Blue Fold. And you can see this one is slimmer and shorter. And I also have a Lamy. This time it's not a Safari, it is a Vista for just to have a demonstrator pen again. So you can see it is shorter than the other two. When we uncap the pens, and let's not post them, Although you can post this one really well. When we unpost the pens, we can see that the reform is still the shortest, but not by that much. Then you can see the nib on the reform is smaller than the nib on the Parker to full, but not that much smaller. And I will show you in a moment. And let's put this aside. And I just want to make some comparison with some other um, demonstrator pens. So you have here the, the Reform. Let's keep the Lamy here. And we have a couple more. I have a Caveco. Sport. By the way, let's just compare the size of the nibs of both pens. You can see the, the nib on the Reform is bigger than the number 5 nib on the Cavec Sport. I also have a Waterman Kultur, which is a very, very good pen. Very inexpensive, but very, very good. I have to make a review of this one. I don't think I did already. And so the nib is a little smaller than this number 6 nib, but not that much smaller. So the pen looks really good. Let me cap them. 
put them side by side just for not for size comparison just to look at some demonstrators I chose only demonstrator pens with also transparent caps so you have these ones and I also brought a Pelican M805 which is a beautiful pen by the way I think I made a review of this pen already so you can check it and finally I have a pen that is not it didn't age very well but I think it is interesting in any way which is a Parker 45 demonstrator it's not a regular product it is a kind of a replica made in Argentina by Ariel Kulok and he made use the original parts but some of the parts have discolored a lot I have to clean them and see what I can do for them but it is always interesting I like Parker 45 so it's interesting to have one like this you will say that oh but that's the clip of the Parker 61 yes in a way but it is also the clip that was used in the Argentina uh, in Argentina for uh, Parker 45s so this is these are some other demonstrators just to show them and now let's see the important stuff is how this little pen not that little writes and here we have our pen and paper and let's see I have this pen kept for a while while I was showing you the other pens but I believe it will write but let's see so this pen is the reform Skywalker and the um, it has a medium steel nib the ink that I'm using is Caveco Royal Blue and the paper is the usual Rodia dot pad so about the nib this nib has some feedback and the kind of feedback it has, it's, it's not like the Japanese feedback I'm used to. It's like, it's like the pen drags a little bit across the paper. So if I have to say something, it reminds me the feedback of those German black coated nibs. They have increased feedback over regular nibs. That's how these pen sounds. But I find it pleasant. It has a feedback that is not unpleasant. And the pen performs really well, as you can see. About the line, it has a true medium line, I would say. About line variation, if you press it hard, you can have more, but you don't. You you feel that's not the right thing to do to press hard with this pen, and you can try to write on the underside. A little bit more feedback but still not scratchy and you can write easily with this pen on the reverse side you can write really well with this pen in reverse so you can see I wrote quite quickly for writing in reverse and it could keep up with it it's not that common for a pen to hold it so be able to keep with this and just to see the the difference of line you can write really well so the same word there and you can see this is like a medium and that is a fine nib so you can have that if you want I think it is a quite comfortable pen. I would prefer that the section would be a little larger. I don't I think it's too slim here on the edge of the section. Although I prefer to hold my pens there and I'd always try to find some kind of texture on the pens. So this has no threads, but I go and I think I try to keep the hold the pen almost above this step 
a very small step up from the barrel to from the section to the barrel, as you can see. And I like to hold it there. I know it's not the most comfortable thing, but for me it is. I prefer to have some texture. So there's no problem for me because here it is wide enough. But if you hold it there, it's not comfortable. So I don't think this is a comfortable pen to hold it how it is supposed to hold, to be held. But if you hold it higher, it's perfect. About the... You, you saw I, I had the pen uncapped and it still writes well. This pen writes really, really well. It's a very good pen. It's that kind of inexpensive, nice pens that were around in every pen store where you walked in. Sometimes it, they were just a, a newspaper store and they had pens and you could find them. Nowadays, you cannot find them. Yes, you can buy inexpensive pens that write really well from China. However, they are not available in regular stores. You have to order them online. And I like the way that you could get one of these pens. You forgot your pen, you entered in a store and you searched for the cheapest pen they had and you took it with you just to write. So it was nice. Uh, that doesn't happen anymore. But that's how things go. So this is all I had to show you. I think this, this pen is quite interesting. I like to see these brands. Reform is a brand with a lot of history. Um, maybe not all of you have tried one of these pens. Some are quite uh, widely available on eBay. They go for 20 euros, 30 euros, 35. So you can try one of these pens. I didn't see a demonstrator one, but maybe when I post this video there will be some available. I don't know. You just need to check them on eBay and try to find them if you are interested. I find these really good, reliable pens that do not have that triangular grip that I don't love that much. So, this is all I had to show you. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will meet you here again next video. Bye!